Hello, hello. Good afternoon. I just get I'm just getting my computer set up on the side here so I can see comments as I'm working away. Hopefully. <laughs> I hope everybody's having a great day so far. Here we go. Mm -mm. Okay. Computer's just loading here. We are going to be doing some advanced sweater nails today. And I know we did sweater nails last time I went live. Um, but we are going to be doing a more advanced technique that I actually saw um, on Instagram from um, another artist. So this is not my original idea by any means, but I wanted to try and recreate it for you guys today. It is a bit finicky, so just be forewarned. Um, and I'm going to try my very best to recreate it because Priscilla... Um, in case you didn't know, she is one of our, uh, actually our social media rock star, and she posted these on um, our Ugly Duckling page, and a couple people asked um, how to do it. So I wanted to do that for you guys today, and um, yeah, show you how I attempted to recreate it. And after the video is done, I'll actually, I, I forgot to write down the original artist's name, so I'll be sure to do that. Um, when I um, am finished with the video today, I'll post it in the uh, description so you guys can see that as well. And of course, all the products that I'm using today. Hi, Erin. Hello from Puerto Rico. Hello, Puerto Rico. Okay, so we are going to be using a combination of our Ugly Duckling 3D Gel. Um, our 3D Gel comes in white, and that's so that you can actually um, mix your own custom colors. So we're going to mix our sweater shade. One thing to keep in mind when you are mixing our, um, hi Elaine, hi Sharin. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you're mixing your own custom 3D um, gel color is that you want to use um, a darker shade. Um, personally, I do this because you need to, you'll have to use less to get um, better color payoff. That makes sense because the base is white. So it's going to lighten any color that you add to it. Um, for this, I pre-mixed some because I actually added some to a nail to have it ready to go because it is a bit finicky to apply on the nail um, the way that I'm doing it. But I'll show you guys how to mix. So I've got my container of 3D gel here. Is the lighting okay for you guys? I hope it's all right. So we're just going to use uh, the spatula end of our duck paddle. and We're going to scoop some of that out. And I'm just going to take a little tiny bit because um, I've already pre-mixed what I'm going to use. So I don't want to, but I can always put this in a container and use it later. So we're getting some of our, whoops, our 3D, <laughs> our 3D gel out here. We're just going to roll it onto our palette. I flatten it out a little bit. Then I'm going to use number um, 115 gel polish, which is this beautiful, beautiful charcoal gray. And um, when it's mixed in with the uh, white 3D gel, it's going to lighten slightly. So you can see the color difference here. This is the same color mixed in with our white gel. So just um, think of that when you're picking your colors too. Just remember that the color is always going to be a bit lighter. I'm just using a little bit for now. A little bit goes a long way. You also want to keep in mind that you don't want to throw off the proper product ratio of the 3D gel. If you add too much gel polish, um, it's going to make the 3D gel very, very sticky, and it's also going to um, affect the integrity of the product uh, for when your client wears it. So if you add too much of something, then it may throw it off, and it may not be as wearable. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Teresa. I, I, uh, I think it's Keitra or Keitra. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. That's a beautiful name. So also um, with our 3D gel... And our gel polish, I'm going to take some um, glitter like I did before with uh, my other sweater nail. If you guys watched, I did a kind of a speckly uh, wool sweater nail. So I'm just using some glitter here, a little bit of glitter. And then I'm going to use some flocking powder also to give us that fuzzy look. So I've got some um, black flocking powder here. I'm just going to use a little bit, depending on how fuzzy you want your nail to be or to appear. 
And then I've got some brown too. You don't have to use uh, multiple colors, but I like to. You may not even notice it, but in my head, I know there's two colors in there, so it makes me happy. <laughs> Hello, Cora. Hi, Nikita. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna mix this all together. So first things first, I kind of like chop into it. That helps start pushing all the product there into the underlying 3D gel, and then I fold it over, kind of like we're kneading dough. And we're just gonna keep working that in there. So one thing to look out for when you've custom mixed your 3D gel is you, you'll you know that you've mixed in too much uh, gel polish or color gel or art gel. If um, the 3D gel becomes very, very sticky, um, I mean, it's, it's a sticky product already because it's gel, but you'll know it can, becomes very shiny and um, almost like, I don't even know what to compare it to, but you will definitely know. Like this, when you take the 3D gel out of the uh, jar, you'll feel um, how it feels when it hasn't been mixed with anything. You wanna keep that integrity and, and make sure as you're working with it, it still feels like that. Like this is a little bit more pliable than when I first got it out of the container, um, just because we have added a little bit of um, gel polish to it, but it's still pliable and I'm still able to work with it and it's not, um, getting overly shiny or anything like that as I'm working with it. If it does get like that, you can do one of two things. You can add a little bit more 3D gel, or you can add a tiny, tiny bit of uh, clear acrylic powder. Not too much, because again, that will throw off the product ratio, the proper ratio, and um, it may infect the uh, wearability and the integrity of the 3D gel. So just keep that in mind when you're mixing. So you can see here, it's still kind of matte. It's not um, going overly shiny or really smooth. So I think we've got a good ratio there. Matches our other one here. Again, true Tasha fashion, mixing way too much, but that's okay. <laughs> so what I did ahead of time, just to save us time, because it is a bit finicky, like I said, I went ahead, I did um, a tippy's tip. I shortened it a little bit and rounded it softly. I did um, some, oh, this. I did some of our Fufu Builder Base underneath. Let me just focus, hopefully. Jeez, Louise. Sorry guys, just one second, I'm just trying to get focused, there we go. So I did um, some Fufu Builder Base underneath, finish filed and like buffed the surface. Then I placed our uh, 3D gel mixture on top of the nail and it is uncured. I'm just gonna move this to the side for now because I have a little diagram I wanna show. So, in order to get this kind of cable knit braided look, we're gonna take it old school. I don't know if you guys remember, in school, did you guys ever draw those S's that go like, you know, you do the three lines, and then three lines, and then you join these two, this over here, this, and this. Do you remember doing that? <laughs> I remember doing that a lot. I sketched this all over my notebooks. There was S's everywhere. Why? I don't know, because it was fun to do, I guess. But this is how we're gonna create the cable knit design. So we're gonna have gone ahead here. So step one is we are going to draw, we're gonna imprint, sorry, three lines into our uncured gel. Then we're gonna go over here, or so, sorry, we're gonna do three lines first. We're gonna do three lines right underneath. Then we've got the three lines underneath here. Step two is we're going to join. So the, the very left line is going to join with the middle one underneath. So we're gonna do that first. Join that. Then once we've got that joined, we are gonna join the middle line with the very right line on the outside. Okay, so we're gonna join this. Don't mind my precise drawing skills here. <laughs> Number four, we've got that joined. So now we have these two lines that are not joined with anything. And we also have a gap down here. So we're gonna add three more lines and we are going to join that one. Same thing, so the very left line always joins with the middle line. Same thing over here. So middle line will join with the very outside line. So outside on the left joins with the middle, middle joins with outside on the right. So everything is going to the right. So middle line will go over to the right. Okay, so then we're over here, number five. So we've got this and this joined. So you can see we're starting to create 
that cable effect. But now again, we've got these outer lines that have really nothing going on. So what we want to do is make it so that this is going, um, make the illusion that this is going behind this top cable knit. So we're going to just draw a line going close to that one. And then this one like that. Same with this, we're going to make that go like that on an angle and this down on an angle. This down here, depending on how long the nail is. Okay, we've got that joined and that joined, that joined and that joined. So we've got our cable knit. Depending on our nail, let's, you know what, let's call it here. Let's just say this is the end of the nail and this is the top of the nail. So we've got that cable drawn. Does that make sense for you guys? Give me some hearts if that makes sense. <laughs> Hi, Frida. Okay, um, let's go ahead. We're gonna hop onto the nail here. So easy peasy, start with, oh yay, lots of hearts, perfect. Okay, so starting with those lines, joining one, joining two, and carrying on to create that cable knit. It can get a little confusing once we get on the nail, so bear with me. I may make a, make a mistake, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but we can, you know what, at the end of the day, we know what we're going for and it'll still kind of look like a sweater. So one cool thing about this design is we actually are going to use a new, well, a, a new bit or a bit that hasn't been used on a client or has at least been cleaned and sanitized properly. Let me just try and focus again. There we go. Okay, so we are actually going to take a safety bit. This is a coarse safety bit. And in the uncured gel, I'm going to roll it over top, apply a bit of pressure, not a lot. See that imprint it makes? Okay, roll it over. You can keep rolling until you've got your desired texture. Okay, now we're going to go in. And we are going to use our duck paddle to create our three lines. So let me just clean this because it's got stuff on it from mixing my gel. Okay, we are, just focus, focus. Okay, so I kind of want to do it on an angle maybe. That's, I tried to do it down the center and it was going off to the side. It was just not working for me. So let's go ahead. We're going to start. One line on the outside, one in the middle, one on the right. Then we're gonna repeat down here, one on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. Then down here, there's not a lot of room, but we're just gonna place it anyways. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use my Omni tool and I'm using the very, very tiny, tiny end of the Omni tool. That way we can really get in there and we can create that design. So here's the, the nail for reference and here's our drawing for reference. So let's follow along. So we've done number one, now we're going to do number two. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to join the very left one with the center one down below. So using the tip, I'm kind of pressing and dotting to join those lines. You see that? Okay. Now, with our center line, we are going to press and carve over to that outside line. Okay, now for this one, outside line is going to meet with that center one down below. So pressing in, walking down to that center one. If you get excess uh, product on your dotting tool, just wipe it off. Now this line is going to come down and over. So we've kind of got the S's started. Now these outer lines, we're just going to, it looks a little messy at first, but once it's all put together, it, it comes together, I promise. <laughs> and you can work in here and kind of perfect everything. Okay, so thinking up top here, I have to think with my brain, so a center line, or a line would be, oops, sorry, a line would be on the outside over here. So I'm gonna go back this way from this center line to the side of the nail there. 
and then a line would be coming from here down approximately Okay, so we've got sort of a, a cable net going on. Like I said, it can get a little confusing once you're on the nail, but um, just keep going. And we'll just start kind of perfecting those lines. Okay, so we've got a rough cable net in the middle. Now I wanna add texture around the outside. So what I'll do is I'll use my dotting tool again, and I'm just going to press sticking a little bit. So I'm actually going to, I have a wipe here. I'm going to um, put a little bit of alcohol on the wipe. I'm just going to roll my um, dotting tool in that to keep it from sticking. And I'm just going to press in here to create almost like a ribbed cuff near the stitching. Okay, and we're going to come over here and same thing. We're going to work our way down. Just pressing in, making imprints there. You could even use your duck paddle. Oh, I'm just going to press in a little bit more. Move this over. You can kind of manipulate your knit a little bit more. A little smushed here. Okay, how are we doing so far? I think we're doing pretty good. All right, let's see. Mm, let's add, add a little more detail. So we'll just use the uh, our spatula of our dotting tool and where that kind of ribbing ends, I'm just going to Make a small indentation, a small line. Same with here. Just press in there. I'm not pressing all the way through, I'm not pressing overly hard. I just want to make that indentation so we have a little bit more detail on here. Now you can see as I'm working, there's stuff coming off the side, and that's okay because at the end, once this is cured, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, lightly file the sides. So uh, we've got our our cable knit in the center there, and then we've got some ribbing and stuff. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to indent that a little bit more. Get a little bit more pronounced. Okay. Let's go ahead, let's cure that. And we're gonna cure this for a full uh, 60 seconds. Let me just start my light here. Here we go. So while that's curing, let's take a look at what we've done here too. On this one, so this gray one is similar to the one I've just done for you guys. On these ones, I've actually gone ahead, let me flip it over. You can see the underside. I did a coat of, don't mind the putty stuck under there. I did a coat of uh, gray gel polish underneath, and then I sculpted um, this sweater on top. So when I carved in to the, um, the 3D gel, that's what's helping create shadowing behind there too, because I've carved in enough where you can actually see the underlying gel polish shining through. So this one is done just with um, the gray uh, 3D gel, and then this one is done over top of a thin layer of gray gel polish underneath. And then I've got a mix of some of our um, Clear as Mud crystals. These white ones uh, are just a random, we don't have those, but we have these beautiful Clear as Mud clear crystals and the white opals I just love. These are like little white stud kind of things. Um, and the 3D gel, of course, comes in white, so you guys can mix your own colors, which I did at the beginning of the video, so if you joined later, don't worry, you can look back and see how I did that. Super easy. Just keep in mind, keep in mind your product ratios not to use too much color gel or gel polish when you're mixing your 3D gel. We are almost here. 
Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because 3D gel will cure with a little bit of a tacky layer, so I'm going to take a wipe and some gel cleanse. Whoops. And I'm just going to remove that um, inhibition layer. Now it's going to be a little bit bumpy, of course, so a lint-free wipe is preferred, but I didn't have one on hand, so bear with me. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to take my medium file. I'm just gonna take this off the post right now so I can file it properly. Whoops. Okay, don't mind the putty there. So then, like I said, on the sides, it sticks out a little bit. That's okay. You can just come at the side wall if it hangs down at all and just lightly file the side to bring it in it's going to add a little bit of bulk to the nail so if you want to file it and bring it in you can do that for sure um, just keep in mind as you're filing in you may file some of this design off on the side just work from side to side I'm gonna flip it All right, let me just dust my gloves, we'll dust this off. And there we go, let me put this back on my post. Where do you find flocking powder? Um, you know what, I've seen a lot of, um, Art stores will sell it in like the miniature sections um, or like art stores online will sell it um, because it's used for like people who make miniature things like miniature scenes and that kind of stuff um, for like grass or moss and that kind of thing. So, um, but I have found it online at art stores. So there we go. We've got our knit sweater with our 3D gel. We went ahead, we used our uh, coarse uh, safety bit to just imprint in that uncured gel to create the um, texture of a sweater. And then we went ahead and we created that um, kind of S design to create our cable knit there. So, I mean, where's my paper? Lost my paper. I'll post a picture of this um, in the uh, comment section too if you guys want to just see how I broke it down. Um, so you can follow along too if you do to give this a try. If you do give it a try, be sure to tag us on Instagram and stuff. We always love seeing your work and what you do with our products. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll list all the products I use today uh, in the, the video description also. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a, um, a little bit more advanced than a regular sweater nail, like a sugared sweater nail, but this is really fun. And if you have a client that's willing to give it a try, I suggest doing it because it's Super cozy for fall and winter. So I hope you guys have a fabulous, fabulous day ahead. If you're just joining us now, don't worry. This will be saved on the uh, Ugly Duckling page here for you to watch back later. Or if you want to refer to it, if you're going to give it a go and you have any questions or anything like that, then you can pop in and take a peek. And we're always available to help too whenever we can. So you're welcome to email us at contact at uglyducklingnails.com or reach out to us on social media. Um, sending you guys big, warm, fuzzy, sweatery hugs today because it's super chilly here. Um, I guess we'll see you guys next week. So have a great weekend coming up and take care. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.